We now come to section 3 which is share based compensation. Share based compensation is intended to align incentives of management and owners. Share based compensation must be treated as an expense even though cash does not change hands. This expense should be measured at fair value. So if employees are getting stock options then the value of those stock options should be based on fair value and that is what needs to be shown as an expense. As an analyst you should look at the disclosures. There you will see the nature and extent of the share based compensation and then an analyst can evaluate the impact on financial statements. There are some disadvantages of share based compensation. One is that employees may have limited influence over the market value of a company. Now the CEO and the CFO for example might be getting options with the idea that their incentives will be aligned with shareholders. But if the ability of the CEO and CFO to influence the market value of the company is limited then those options are not really helping. The second point is that incentives such as stock options might make managers more risk averse or less risk averse than they should be. This might seem contradictory but let's understand this through an example. Let us say that employees get stock options with an exercise price of 25 and let's say that the current company stock price is 20. For the employees to make money on the stock options, the value of the stock must go up above 25. If that happens, then the employees benefit. On the other hand, if the stock goes down, then there is nothing to lose. So given that options have a one-sided payoff, there is an incentive to take extra risk so that these options are in the money. On the other hand, if the stock price is much higher than the exercise price. So we might have an exercise price of 25 and the stock might now be up at 40. In this case, the management which has stock options might play it extra safe so as to lock in this gain. So with stock options, either of these issues might exist. Either the managers might be more risk averse than necessary or they might be less risk averse than they should be. And the final obvious point is dilution. When management is getting shares, the number of shares outstanding goes up. So EPS comes down and also the ownership gets diluted. Now the three broad categories of share based compensation are shown right here. The first category is stock grants and here we have three subcategories. The most basic is an outright grant where employees get shares. This expense needs to be reported at fair value. So this is the fair value of the stock on grant date. And let's say that the service period is four years, then the expense needs to be allocated over the four years. Another category is restricted grants. Here shares have to be returned if certain conditions are not met. The expense should be reported on the fair value of the stock on grant date and the compensation expense is allocated over the service period. So these two points are common. Performance shares. Here the compensation is determined by some performance measure other than share price. And as before, the expense is reported on the fair value of the stock on grant date and compensation expense is allocated over the service period. Next we come to stock options and I'd say this is the most testable segment. Stock options need to be reported at fair value. Accounting rules require the valuation of options using models. Now the options that employees get might not be traded in the market and if there is no fair market value available then we use models such as the Black-Scholes model or the binomial model to come up with the value of options. This is something you will see in detail when you do derivatives but at a very basic level there are 
several variables that impact option prices and those variables are shown here since we are generally dealing with call options so here's how you can think of this we have an option pricing model and these are the various inputs to the model the model will give us an option price of these inputs the only one that is completely objective is the exercise price so an employee might get options with a strike price of 25 so there is no ambiguity here but with these other variables there is some subjectivity so in coming up with the option price we need to assume a share price volatility the higher the volatility that we assume the higher the value of the call option so if a company wants to show a high expense it can increase this assumed volatility if a company wants to show a low stock option expense then it can assume a relatively low volatility the estimated dividend yield on the stock is another subjective variable the higher this estimated dividend yield the lower the value of the call option the risk free rate also has an impact on the call option price though this is not a very strong relationship if the risk free rate is higher the call option is a little bit higher this is the call option price estimated life of the option so the longer the life the higher the value of the call option so at this stage just remember these relationships you will understand them better when you do derivatives from an exam point of view you might see something like this that in 2014 a company assumed a volatility of 15% and then in 2015 if the assumed volatility goes up from 15% to 17% then what will happen to the estimated option price and the answer here would be that if this volatility number is going up that means that the option price is going up in other words the expense is going to be higher when a company grants stock options there are several important dates one is the grant date this obviously is the date when the options are being granted the vesting date this is the date when employees can first exercise the stock options so if an employee is told that he can exercise the stock options after 4 years then 4 years is the vesting period and the date 4 years later would be the vesting date after the vesting date the employee can then exercise the options the compensation expense is allocated over the service period so if the value of options being given let's say is 100 million and those options are based on a service period of 4 years then we allocate this expense equally over the 4 years here is an example of what we are talking about a company awards 1 million stock options to its executives on 1st july 2015 the estimated cost of each option is 0.5 the options require a service period of 4 years after the grant date and before vesting what is the stock option expense for 2015 so do this before looking at the answer here is what you should get we have a million options times 0.5 here the fair value of the options is given and then we divide by 4 because the service period is 4 years so every year the amount would be 0.5 million divided by 4 and then since these options are being granted in the middle of 2015 and we want the allocation for the second half of 2015 we multiply by half so the expense for the year 2015 is going to be 62500 as mentioned before both stock grants and stock options have the potential to dilute earnings per share so some companies work with stock appreciation rights or sars here companies compensate employees based on an increase in share price so actual shares or options are not given but compensation is tied to the change in share price there are two advantages of doing this one is that potential risk aversion is limited 
the second is that shareholder ownership is not diluted sars are valued at fair value and allocated over the service period this statement is extremely important you see it over and over and a disadvantage of sars is that they require a current period cash outflow this brings us to the end of the reading here is a summary of the main points you should know the different types of post employment benefits the most testable or the most significant part of this reading is the pension obligation and the pension cost so the pension obligation is the present value of future obligations you need to understand the different pension cost components and how to calculate them you need to understand the impact of assumptions on pension obligation and cost you need to know how to make adjustments so with the pension cost typically it's all shown as an operating expense but there are components of the pension expense which are non operating so you need to know how to make those adjustments you need to know how to make the cash flow adjustments and you also need to know the impact of assumptions on share based compensation specifically with stock options as always i want you to read the summary review the learning objectives do all the examples in this reading do all the practice problems and also do practice questions from other sources